What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with Samsung Galaxy A54 5G tips and tricks and hidden features. So stay tuned if you want to learn how to get the most out of your device. Now the first thing I want to do is show you a quick and easy way to access the camera app on your phone. Now all you have to do is just double press on the power button and just like that, it will immediately pull up the camera. And you can do this from anywhere throughout the operating system. You can also be in the app drawer, for example. And again, just double press on the power button and the camera app will immediately appear. Now this is done through a feature called side key and you can actually further customize this. So to do that, you're gonna pull down the shade, go to the gear icon to go to the settings. Then from there, go to search, type in side, key and you'll see it right there side key so go there and you can see that we do indeed have quick launch camera enabled by default however we also have the option to pick any app of our choosing so switching over to open app will then give you the ability to pick any app so let's have it pull up instagram for example so i'll choose instagram and then now i'll double press on the power button and it pulls up Instagram instead of the camera app. So that's really awesome and certainly something that I find to be very useful. Now also located in this side key menu is the ability to customize press and hold. So by default, if you press and hold in the power button, it will pull up Bixby, which I know that some people like Bixby and some people don't really care for it. Now, if you would prefer to have the power menu to pull up instead by holding down on the power button, then you can actually switch to that here in the settings. So we can go to power off menu. So then now by holding down the power button, it will instead pull up the power off restart menu, which I feel like makes a lot more sense than having it pull up Bixby. And I know that if you want to turn off the phone or restart the phone, you can also just pull down the shade twice and the button is up there. But I feel like holding down the power button to achieve that makes a lot more sense. Now with the Samsung Galaxy A54 5G, we have a very large 6.4 inch display. Now that large display is excellent when it comes to watching content, for example, but it can be a bit difficult to reach all portions of the display when using the phone with just one hand. Now, thankfully, Samsung has come up with a very cool solution to this, and it's called one-handed mode. So let me show you how to get to that. So you're gonna pull down the shade, go to the gear icon for the settings, go to search, type in one-handed, and you'll see it right there, one-handed mode. So go there, then from there, go here. And then one-handed mode is not enabled by default. So you will want to enable that. And then you'll see that we have two different options. So there's gesture and button. Now I personally prefer button instead. So let's switch over to that. And then now all you have to do to access one-handed mode is just double tap on the home button. So let's do that right now. And just like that, it now shrinks down the display. Then from here, you can navigate around the phone as you normally would. So essentially we have a mini smartphone here. But instead of how it was before, I can access all parts of the operating system with just one hand. So that's very convenient. You can also switch it to the other side as well. So if you wanna use the phone left-handed, you can easily do that. Also, if you want to, you can further toggle things. You can move it a little bit further up. Maybe that makes more sense for you. And then another awesome ability with this is that you can also resize the one-handed mode screen here to make it a little bit bigger or even a little bit smaller. So you can pretty much customize things exactly to your liking, which is really cool. And then to exit out of one-handed mode, all you have to do is just tap outside of the operating system. So just like that, it then resizes things to the way that it was before. Now with the Samsung Galaxy A54 5G, we do have the traditional Android three button navigation enabled here by default. And I feel like most people do prefer this, which is why Samsung did make this the actual default navigation method. However, if you prefer to use gesture-based navigation, you can do that here with the device. So let me show you how to set that up. And even if you think you're not a fan of gesture-based navigation, I still recommend at least giving it a try. But go in here to the settings, go to search, type in nav, and you'll see right there, navigation bar. So go there, and then you'll see it right down here, navigation bar, go there, and then we have quite a few options. Now the first option is to actually customize the three button navigation. So if you'd prefer to have the back button on the left side and the recent apps on the right side, you can also do that switch. So that might make more sense for you based on how you prefer to use your phone. But you can see after doing that, 
The back button is now on the other side and the recent apps has also been flipped around. But the other option is gesture-based navigation. So if you go there, you'll see the buttons now disappear and instead we have one small bar at the bottom of the display. And essentially, to go to your recent apps, you're gonna swipe partially up. To go back, you're gonna swipe from the side. And then to go home, you're gonna swipe up. So overall, that does make a lot of sense the way they've implemented it. And it really comes down to personal preference on which navigation method you prefer. Now, in addition to that, you can go to more options under swipe gestures, and you'll see there's also the option here for swipe from bottom. So this is kind of a hybrid of the two navigation options. So if you go to that, you'll now have three lines at the bottom. The left line, if you swipe up on that, it takes you to recent apps. The middle line, swiping up on that, takes you home. And then the line on the right side here, swiping up on that, takes you back. Now the next thing I wanna do is show you how to take a screenshot with the Samsung Galaxy A54 5G. And in fact, I'm gonna show you two different methods on how to achieve that. Now the first way to take a screenshot is pretty simple. All you have to do is just hold the volume down and power button for about a second. And just like that, it takes the screenshot. Then from there, you can edit it or share it, or it'll just save automatically to your gallery. Now the second way to take a screenshot is using a feature called Palm Swipe to Capture. Now I will admit this method is a little bit complicated, a little bit more difficult than it should be, but I figured I'll show you anyway. Now this is enabled by default, but essentially all you have to do is just take your palm and then swipe it over the display. So let's give that a try right now. And there we go, it took the screenshot. So kind of awkward to take a screenshot using that method, but those are two different ways to take a screenshot with the device. Now the next thing I wanna show you is an awesome feature called Edge Panels. Now, you probably noticed this already, as this feature is enabled by default, but essentially you get this tiny notch in the upper right corner of the phone. Now, you can swipe over on that, and it will pull up a lot of different apps here that have already been curated by default. So you can customize this, you can create clusters if you want to, so you can have app pairings where you can tap and have both apps appear at the same time in split screen. So that's really cool. But in addition to that, there are some different customizations that you can make here. Now the first thing is, there's nine dots down here in the corner. If you tap on that, it'll take you to all your various apps here on the phone. So you can do this from anywhere throughout the operating system if you just want easy access to your various apps. But in addition to that, when you swipe over, there is a settings gear icon right there. If you tap on that, it'll give you a lot of different options for different edge panels. So by default, we have the apps panel, but you can choose people, smart select, tasks, weather, tools, reminders, the clipboard, and there's even more options here in the Galaxy Store. And then if you wanna customize the various apps in this app panel, you can go to this pen icon in the bottom right corner, and then from there, you can remove some, you can add some, and you can configure things to exactly how you want it to be. Now the next thing I wanna do is show you how to hide apps with the Samsung Galaxy A54 5G. Now what I mean by this is that if you don't want an app to show up on the home screen or in the app drawer, you can easily hide that. So for this demonstration, I'm gonna hide Facebook. So when you're in the app drawer, then tap on this button with the three dots in the upper right corner, go to settings, then from there, go to hide apps on home and app screens, and then you'll see a list of all the various apps installed on the device. So again, for this demonstration, I'm gonna hide Facebook. So I'm gonna tap on Facebook, and you'll see it's now in our hidden apps. So I'm gonna go to done, and then now you can see Facebook is no longer on the home screen, and it's also nowhere to be found in the app drawer itself. Now if you wanna bring that back, go back to the same area, go here, remove it from hidden apps, go to done, and then now it will be back in the app drawer, but it won't be back here on the home screen. So you will have to place that back to where it was if you do wanna revert things to how it was previously. Now Samsung offers a lot of different customizations with the lock screen on the Galaxy A54 5G. So to customize it, you're going to go to the lock screen, but this time just hold down. It's gonna prompt you to put in your fingerprints, do that. And then from here, you can see that there's a lot of different things we can change. So the first thing is, I'm gonna change the clock style. So tap on that, and you can see here, you can even have no clock if you don't want one, but if you wanna have an analog clock, you can do that. It's a lot of different designs here. 
Then there's also different colors you can choose from. There's also gradients. So I'm gonna pick blue as the color. And then just like that, you can see the clock is a different color and also a different style. You can also customize the buttons in the bottom left and right corners. So by default, you get the phone and the camera. But if you tap on one of those buttons instead, you can either remove the app or if you want to, you can pick the flashlight, calculator, also some other ones where you have to actually access the phone first with a pin code or fingerprint, but you can see that you can technically pick any app of your choosing. So that's a really awesome customization and potentially something that could really come in handy for you. So this option is really cool right here where it says contact information. So if you go there, you can actually add in some contact info in case someone finds your phone and you want them to contact you so that you can get it back. So that's really awesome. That's a great idea. Now the next thing I wanna show you are some various display modifications that you can make here with the A54 5G. So you're gonna pull down the shade, go to the settings, go then down to display, and the first thing here is to pick between light and dark mode. So if you want dark mode instead, you can easily make that change. So essentially everything's a lot darker. This definitely comes in handy at nighttime or maybe if you're in the movie theater. You can also go to dark mode settings if you want to enable a schedule. So that's really convenient too. Also in the display area, there's some other options I wanna show you here. Now there's a lot of different things, so I do recommend kind of trying everything out. But this next one is motion smoothness. So by default, we have adaptive motion smoothness, which essentially means that when it makes sense, the phone will run the display at 120 hertz. So essentially that's a faster refresh rate, making things look and feel a lot smoother here on the phone, but in return, it does use up a bit more of your battery. So if you want the standard 60 hertz instead, you can enable that and then save some battery, but keep in mind that things won't be quite as smooth here on the phone compared to that faster refresh rate. And honestly, the faster refresh rate is kind of a signature feature here with the phone. So I do recommend keeping that enabled if you can. In addition to that, there's Eye Comfort Shield. So this is especially helpful at nighttime as it does limit the blue light. So definitely give that a try if you think that's something that will help you. You can also customize it as well. So you can pick the exact color temperature that you prefer. So that's a nice customization. There's also screen mode. So by default, it's vivid, but you can also pick natural if you want. And then from there, you can also adjust the white balance so it's cooler or warmer. There's also advanced settings for that too, where you have full customization for the RGB. Beyond that, there's also the ability to customize the font size and style. You can also pick the screen zoom. So if you want everything to be a bit bigger, you can do that too. There's also screen timeout. So I did set this to 10 minutes because I've been making a lot of videos about this phone, but I believe the default is 30 seconds, but I definitely recommend trying some different screen timeout times so that the phone can be configured to exactly how you want it to be. There's also easy mode. So if you're setting up this phone for yourself or someone else who's not very into technology and you want a very simple layout here, you can enable easy mode. Now next, I wanna show you an option called motion and gestures. So you're gonna to go to the settings here, go to search, type in motion and you'll see right there motions and gestures. So go there and there's a lot of different options here. Some of them are already enabled, but some of them are not. So for example, lift awake. So turn on the screen when you pick up your phone. That is not enabled by default. So I'll enable that. And then when I turn off the display here, it might be tough to do with the camera in front of me, but essentially when I pick up the phone here it now turns on the display. Now double tap to turn on screen and double tap to turn off screen are already enabled, but we'll give that a try right now. So essentially if I double tap outside of the icons, it'll turn off the display. And then if I double tap when the display is off, it will turn the display on. Then from there, you can put in your fingerprint or pin code to access the device. And then keep screen on while viewing, that's pretty interesting. So essentially with this, it will keep the screen on while you're looking at your phone using the front camera to detect your face. So when that's enabled, you shouldn't have to worry about the phone screen turning off if you're actually looking at the device. And then the final thing I wanna show you is how to get longer battery life out of the Samsung Galaxy A54 5G. Now I'll show you this mode, it's called power saving mode. So pull down the shade here, go to the settings, go to search, type in power saving, and you'll see it right there. So power saving, and it is not on by default, which probably makes sense, but essentially once that's enabled, it'll cut out many of the background tasks and also change the motion smoothness of the display to 60 hertz. And it also will do some other things that you can see here. So with that enabled, you should expect to get a lot better battery life out of your phone. Now I wouldn't keep power saving on at all times because 
you do want your phone to perform at its maximum ability, but if you know that you're in for a long day with no ability to recharge the phone, then I definitely would recommend enabling power saving mode. But this concludes my video on tips, tricks, and hidden features for the Samsung Galaxy A54 5G. I hope you learned something new today and enjoyed the video. If you did, definitely give it a thumbs up. But with all that said, I'll see you in the next one. Take care and have a good one.